we have the idea that there are different type of natural plasmids that can also be used as a cloning vehicles or vectors. So actually initially when the gene cloning procedures were started, the natural plasmids were used as a cloning vectors. So natural plasmids are those plasmids that are mainly not constructed in vitro for the sole purpose of gene cloning. We can quote different examples of natural plasmids like coal E1. It is a natural plasmid and it carried a selectable markers for the production of a bacteriocin like the colicin E1. Bacteriocin, it is a protonaceous toxin and sometimes it can also be categorized under the heading of antibiotics and one of the example of bacteriocin it is colicin E1 that is carried by coal E1 plasmid. So this plasmid it is not only carrying the gene for colicin E1 production but also gene uh, that can confer immunity to this toxin R um, that may be called as antibiotic because it is also important that cell should protect itself from this colicin E1 or colicin 1. So when microbes they produce colicin then they can have advantage over other microbes that are present in the vicinity when competition it is there in the environment. Iske alawa, एक और प्लाज्मिड जो कि इसी का डेरिवेटिव है कोल E1 का उसको कहते हैं R RSF2124 सो इट्स अ डेरिवेटिव ऑफ कोल E1 प्लाज्मिड तो इसका मतलब है कि इसमें भी कोलिसिन प्रोडक्शन की जीन होगी और इसके अलावा इसमें एक एडिशनल ट्रांसपोसोन होता है दैट कैन कॉन्फर एम्पिसिलिन रेजिस्टेंस you may have the idea that transposone is a segment of DNA that can mediate its insertion into the genome. Iske lava a core natural plasmid hai, that is very famous. It is PSC 101 that is mainly harbored by salmonella strains. So this table, it indicated the properties of some natural plasmids used for cloning DNA. First one, it is PSC101 and it contains single sites for different type of restriction endonucleases. The famous one include EQR1, in 3 BAMH1. So it is very important that if plasmids, it is having single restriction sites for different type of restriction endonucleases. And here the selectable marker, it is for tetracycline resistance. And insertional inactivation, it is not used here as a selectable marker. The next plasmid, it is coal E1, very famous. And it contains single restriction site for enzyme like EQR1. And it contain a selectable marker for immunity to colicin E1 and at the same time it also contain gene that can mediate the production of colicin E1. The last example it is a derivative of coal E1 plasmid RSF2124. It carried restriction sites for EQR1 and BAMH1. So it contain additional transposone that can mediate ampicillin resistance and at the same time colicin E1 production it is there and when foreign DNA it is inserted within the gene that encode colicin E1 so it will become inactivated so that the cell will become sensitive to colicin E1 that will act as a selectable marker. Now these natural plasmids they can be used as a cloning vectors, but there are certain limitations. For example, 
if we will use PSC11 as a cloning vector, then its plasmid it can be digested with EQR1 because single site it is present for this restriction enzymes on the PSC101 and similarly the foreign DNA that contain our gene of interest it can also be digested with EQR1 then both they can be ligated and then the tetracycline resistance can be used for the selection of recombinants. Lekin yahan ek masla hai, ek limitation hai, wo ye hai ke uh, baas dafa hota hai ke plasmid DNA hud hi recircularize kar jata hai without, without the insertion of the foreign DNA. So in this case, either the plasmid DNA it is recircularized without the addition of foreign DNA or if foreign DNA it is inserted. In both cases, the transformants they will show resistance against tetracycline. So it is problem here. So then next plasmid, coal E1, it can be used and its use is relatively easy because it contains two genes, one that can mediate the production of coalition E1 and other gene that can mediate the immunity against this antibiotic. Suppose we have inserted our gene in the region of colicin E1 that contains single restriction site for EQR1. If foreign DNA is inserted here, then the expression of this gene it is inactivated so that it will become sensitive to colicin E1 that will indicate the foreign DNA it is inserted and then the transformants they are selected on the basis of other trait that is immunity to colicin E1. Again here is a problem that to screen transformants on the basis of immunity it is not so simple. So for this purpose its derivative RSF2124 it is best suited. The reason is that it contain an additional transposone that mediate the resistance against ampicillin. Again you can suppose that the foreign DNA it is inserted with an origin of the gene that encode coalition even production. So after insertion, the gene it will become inactivated and cell will become sensitive against colicin E1 and the transformants then selected on the basis of another selectable marker that is the resistance against ampicillin. So we can say that col E1 or its derivatives RSF2124 it has advantages over PSC 101 plasmid. The advantage is that coal E1 it is present as a high copy number plasmid and moreover its detection after transformation it is relatively easy. Although these plasmids like coal E1 when it is inserted into E. coli cells. So naturally they are high copy number plasmids but their copy number can be further enhanced or increased if the cells that are growing in log phase they are treated with an antibiotic like chloromphenicol. Chloromphenicol is an antibiotic that can inhibit the protein synthesis. So when the culture is treated with chloromphenicol then it can selectively inhibit the chromosomal DNA biosynthesis but not the plasmid because the inhibition of protein synthesis by chloromphenicol it will not affect the plasmid replication. So finally after 10 to 
develop upwards about 50% of the DNA will be represented by the plasmid DNA. So in this way, we can increase the copy number of the plasmids that may be up to 1000 to 3000 copies per cell.